Hello and welcome back for another Penny Dreadful video. Today I'm going to be playing a Emergent Ultimatum list. And this is a 7 mana card, 2 black, 3 green, 2 blue. Search your library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle that card into your library, you may cost the other 2 cards without paying their mana cost, and then you have to exile this card. It requires a ton of mana and a lot of colored mana, but like many of the ultimatums, this can be a game-winning card. Our entire deck is is a lot of ramp and uh, some control elements or removal at least. And then we have these emergent ultimatums and some packages that you can, can go get with this. One of the things that you can do is you can find Walk the Eons and Beacon of Tomorrows. And then if those are in your pile, then at least you're guaranteed one extra turn. And potentially a third so you can then throw in like a nezzle hall or a rune scar demon or maybe like a, a planeswalker and at least you get that value another big part of this deck is upheaval you can include upheaval in your emergent ultimatum pile maybe a fatty and something else and then a lot of the time your opponent can't give you the upheaval and the fatty because then you just cast upheaval and then the fatty and proceed to win the game another thing you can do with uh, upheaval in the pile is go find upheaval go find plain white celebration and one of the five mana planeswalkers all of those five mana planeswalkers can go ultimate with the uh the proliferate from the plain white celebration so you can go get liliana liliana can go ultimate not always going to be relevant but in some matchups it will you can go get nissa that can make a bunch of four four creatures and threaten to win the game next turn you can go get jace that's also pretty decent so that is one of the piles you can make and then oftentimes your opponent is almost forced to give you a planeswalker ready to go ultimate maybe they give you upheaval and plain white celebration but then you just upheaval and make four two twos and, and beat them that way so that's a it's kind of a sweet pile to make and these Planeswalkers are also quite nice with Walk the Eons and Beacon of Tomorrows. Planeswalkers and Extra Turns is a nice combination. A big part of the deck is also Garrick, also a Planeswalker. You can play Garrick on turn 4 and then play an Ultimatum the turn after. So that's quite nice. We also have Binding the Old Gods, which is a removal and ramp to help us get to that Emergent Ultimatum. I have Hunting Wilds as kind of the fourth Garrick. I didn't want to play four, four Garricks and then get one stuck in my hand if I have multiples. So Hunting Wilds can help you set up the Emergent Ultimatum. It can get to you forest, which you can you can get islands and, and swamps with that as well, since we have those snow duels. Cultivate, Balagab Recoveries, Sea Beyond to shuffle back some targets if we happen to draw them. Sylvan Library to float some of the cards on top of your deck. Sometimes the card will, will be that you will see that you draw uh, a beacon of tomorrow and you can try and keep that on top so you don't actually draw it i had more far seeks at the beginning but then i realized sylvan carotid is legal and this is not a fires deck where your land drops or land count matters no you just want mana sylvan carotid fixes your mana and it's a great blocker then I have some removal spells and some lands. And then over to the sideboard, I have some negates, some dresses, crown seal, ravenous trap, and nihil spellbomb for his graveyard decks, blood chief thirst for extra removal, memoricide, and cranial extraction. If you want to guarantee one of these effects, you can tutor for both of them against certain combo decks that's going to be great. Yahini's expertise for some more removal, and then obstinate bailoffs. It's decent against him decks, it's just an extra creature. For power for life gain that's nice i've not played with this deck a bunch but the theory is all there let's see if it works out in practice round one let's see if it all works out playing against pile i hope their their name is indicative of their deck we'll see i think i'll keep this hopefully it's against a, a deck that plays to the board and our removal is good if not we might be in trouble you start with a swamp okay Walk to Eons, not a great draw, but with Garrick, that's a reasonable card, I guess. Yeah, hopefully we're not drawing too many of our targets. Maybe this deck would have been better last season when we had Brainstorm as the uh, the best card to be putting stuff back. Divest. Well, jokes on them, they miss. That's always nice when your opponent misses with their discard spell. Hinterland Harbor, let's just play the forest, not give them that free information. Another Swamp, and what? Underworld Connections, okay, that's not a bad one. I'm gonna get to draw a card and then I'll I'll get to binding it hopefully. Let's just play Sylvan Carotid and then play the Swamp and pass. I'm probably just gonna play binding next turn just to kill this Underworld Connections. I don't want them to draw too many more cards. I'm not doing anything. I like it. None of the land is not the worst. Like I said, I'm just gonna binding. 
If I draw an emergent ultimatum, I can still cast it with an extra land from the from the binding, I think. No, actually no, because that's gonna come in tapped, so I wouldn't be able to cast it, but that's fine. We don't have it yet. If we already had it, I may have gone for Garrick to make sure that I can cast it next turn. Whip of Erebos, sure. Let's go find a land, and there's more lands waiting for me. What do I want? I think I want more blue mana. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Play Garrick, gonna make a beast, play a land, and then just pass. I do need to find some action, but there's there's some boom booms in this deck. Walk the Eons is not the worst. So seven mana, Ravenous Chupacabra. Kill my guy, sure. Do I go for the throat there, Chupacabra? I don't think so. Plain White Celebration, interesting. Play my land, and then just take an extra turn. Or I can make a bunch of guys and then take an extra turn next turn. Also not the worst, honestly. I can just make a bunch of tutus. Hopefully they have no sweeper. Make a beast. And then next turn, I can take an extra turn. Yeah, this is this is good to see. I mean, we haven't drawn our ultimatum, but these cards seem to be reasonable on their own. Gray Merchant. Yep. Drain me for six. That's a lot. I can kill the merchant. Another land, sure. So I just kill the merchant. And then take an extra turn. Do not have the islands to sacrifice. Let's attack first. Yep, they trade. Go down to 18. Let's just untap two lands and then have our Garrick stay around. <sighs> More lands. That's that's not good. Create a beast. They also only have two cards in hand, so they will get to get back Grey Merchant, and that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. They're down to nine, but they're gonna go up four, and they have a life linking two four, which is not bad. Any ultimatum we draw off the top is gonna be insane here. Yeah, we can't do the time stretch trick, but there's plenty of other things we can do. Okay, they're gonna whip back, what? The Chupacabra killing my beast and then attacking into my Garrick, probably, or not attacking. Oh no, they are. Well, I will block. They gain some life, the guy's exiled. Blood Teeth Thirst, not a great one. I'd rather keep my Garrick around still and then attack with these. I mean, we are getting there. They're at two now and they scoop. All right, good to see that our deck can win even when we don't draw the uh, the ultimatum. What do I want to do? I like most of our setup, to be honest. Maybe take out like a Farseek and like, Obstinate Bailoff could be okay if they're on like a, a discard plan, if they hit me and I put in two Obstinate Bailoffs. And if you're mono black, I'm expecting them to be running him. This card seems pretty bad. Maybe a Nihil Spellbomb's okay. Crux of Fate, do I want that? Do I need that? Don't necessarily think I do. Bloodsheath Thirst is also kind of bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll take out one. I think I, I don't need that much of removal. I just want to go over the top of whatever they're doing. I like the fact that this hand has Sylvan Library, but it doesn't have much else going on for it. I think I'll keep this. It's not ideal to have upheaval in the hand, but I think against them, I'm okay with this. Oh, Dark Ritual. No Hypnotic Spectre, please. No, Underworld Connections. Okay, okay. Not ideal, but... <laughs> Drawing Nezahal, also not ideal. I mean, they get to start gaining some card advantage, but it is slow and I do just need some time. Oh, they have no more land drops? Wow, yikes. Let's play the Sylvan Library. We can keep up with their card advantage, maybe. They need to start drawing lands, otherwise this game is just over. Oh, there's a land. Let's see what we find. I wouldn't mind finding some ramp. I'm gonna pay for it to keep one of these, just to get a little bit deeper into my deck. Play the Ice Tunnel and pass. Yep, they're just drawing cards over there. This Leliana is also gonna be sweet, I think. Dark Ritual, okay. What did, another Connections. Yeah, that's that's fine, but they're not actually doing anything. They're not pressuring me. My draw is also not great. Put on top, and then I guess put the Forest on top too. Don't want to pay more life. Let's just play this. And then next turn I can play Lily. Search for something or just make them discard. Okay, third land. Do they want to play something or do they just want to keep drawing cards? Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, I can kill that and I will. Don't need that random discard. No thank you. More lands. Way too many lands. Put on top two. Play this. And then I think I'm just going to play Lily. And then search for something. And then I'm actually going to search for Nissa. There's another Planeswalker, another threat, and that resets the top of my library for the Sylvan. It helps me cast Emergent Ultimatum. It's good with upheaval. It has a lot of good things going for it. Yep, they're drawing cards, probably looking for an answer for Nissa or Liliana, sorry. Are they gonna dress? Yeah, so they see upheaval in this ultimatum. Curious what they're gonna take. Probably the ultimatum? 
Yeah, they are. No, they take the upheaval. That's fine too. We do have the Balagat recoveries to rebuy stuff. Beacon of Tomorrows. Um, let's put that on top. And I'm going to pay for life for the bail off. I think that's fine. Play Nissa. Play this. I think just make them discard. I probably wanted to do this differently now I think about it. Because I, I played my land after Nissa. And now I can't attack with it because it doesn't get haste, unlike the, the new Nissa that does give haste. So we're missing out on 4 damage, which is not irrelevant. The plan is still to go over the top of whatever they are doing, but 4 damage is not irrelevant. Yep, I think I'm just going to go for the time stretch plan next turn. Play the ultimatum, get the two time walks and maybe the plain white celebration to proliferate onto these planeswalkers if they give me that. I hope my opponent doesn't scoop. I mean, this this has been a bit of a lame duck game where they were just stuck on lands, but it would be still sweet to, to get to do our thing. I'm worried a lot of opponents will just scoop through the Emergent Ultimatum, which is kind of the point. You want to win when you cast that card, but you also kind of want to do the thing. No! No! Ah, gone is the Ultimatum. Yep, yep. I still have the Beacon on top, which is also not bad. I can just Beacon, tutor with Liliana for another Beacon, and try and kill them that way. Okay, they kill my land too. Yep, mm, these are pretty bad. Put on top, put on top. Actually, can I play the beacon? Doesn't look like I can. Play the land. I only have two forests that I can untap, so I can get the six mana, but that's it. Just turn this ice tunnel into a guy. Let's search. I'm gonna search for an ultimatum that will be safely on the top. And just attack. They're also just down to nine. Maybe I should have just played the obstinate bail off. Kind of just want to have that in hand for if they hit me. I think it's just not going to matter. And it's kind of annoying actually that the beacon is now in my hand. Probably wanted that to be in the deck for when I find the ultimatum and do that. Yeah, still learning a little bit, but in a situation like this where it's just not really all that hard to kill them, I think we'll be fine to kill them. Okay, they kill my land again. Yeah, use that. Put this on top and then. I'll just pay the life for this. That's fine. Oh, I do need to worry about dying to, to the Grey Merchant, actually, now that I think about it. So maybe I am being too greedy. But let's see. Black, black, green. Untap these two. And then I can ultimatum. Yeah, let's just cast the ultimatum. I can think I want walk the eons. I want... What do I want? I want plain white celebration. So I at least can gain life where I can proliferate my walkers and maybe I just want rune scar demon yeah that seems fine okay they don't want to give me the extra turn spell that makes sense I'll cast this I'll gain four life and proliferate twice so I'll gain eight life proliferate yeah that seems fine and then I'll cast this I'll go get another ultimatum I mean ultimatum can't really be all that bad proliferate here and here and again and then what else do i want to do i think i'll just search for the walk the eons now put that on top and then next turn i can ultimate nissa and then take an extra turn and that should be plenty to kill them yeah it's nice to see that even when the lines that we fought off beforehand they become unavailable because some cards have been discarded or are just in our hands but there's other piles and winning combinations you can make again our opponent really just mana screwed this game also so it's a little bit like gold fishing to rest, sure. And you can see, nice. As I said a couple times, a little bit like goldfishing, but it all worked out. So at least we got to do our thing and we can beat a goldfish. I'll see you for the next one. Round two, playing against Ludwig Frito. Good player. So let's see what they have in store for us. Well, my hand seems fine. I have some ramp. I have a silver library, plain white celebration. Don't really want that in hand. I might need to run more CBRs, perhaps. Although I, I'm not a big fan of that card. Or I need to run like duplicates of certain effects. That could also be a thing. Play our land. No, blue, red. I think I'll start with the carotid and pass. Island, nothing. Sea beyond. Could just run the sea beyond, see what happens. Oh, not white mana. Sea beyond. Instantly resolves. Let's put back, hmm, plain white celebration. I think I'd still put that back and then run out to Sylvan Library. The other one also instantly resolved. Maybe this one doesn't. No, it does. Nice. It's very nice to have an active library. They're not doing anything. Oh, Pyretic Ritual. So this is some sort of storm deck then? Primal Amulet. Yep, that looks like storm all right. So we don't have infinite time. More lands. No. Okay. 
don't want this land. I do want the Jace. And the question is, do I want the Balagan recovery? I think that's just, mm, it's pretty poor, but I want to keep it just to get deeper into my deck, I think. Play this and then play that Jace. Draw a card and mill me because I don't want to draw that. Oh, oh, we drew the Woodland Cemetery and milled the Emergent Ultimatum. Well, that's an unfortunate sequence. I'm just worried that I'm, I'm going to be dead pretty soon here, which is obviously not ideal. Is this like frantic search to start? Yep. I mean, let's see it. We have some stuff on the board for this matchup. Our, our main deck really isn't that good against combo, I think. We just need to go for a super fast ultimatum in that case. And we cannot cast an ultimatum for not next turn, but even the turn after we'd need. So maybe I was better off just far seeking and hoping to draw ultimatum. Sahili, sure. Seething Song. And we have one card after this. So is it like Dragon Storm? No, they wouldn't have the mana for that. Okay, turn their primal amulet into a servo just to be able to attack Jace. Oh, <laughs> they were saying they did it the wrong way. Yeah, no. Mm. It wouldn't have flipped right away anyway, and it, I don't think it can flip. Oh, it makes their spell one cheaper. So maybe they do have Dragon Storm. Oh, Treasure Cruise. I see. But now their <laughs> now their amulet doesn't flip or get extra counters. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. That's that's kind of awkward. More lands. They still have more mana. Opt. Yep, more guys. So my Jace is probably dying, but that's okay. Well, not this turn it's not dying, but the turn after. Attack my Jace for one. They are in good position to go off next turn. Garrick, sure. There's the ultimatum, which I do want. I don't need the hunting wilds. So what I can do then is put Garrick on top, then the hunting wilds. Now, I want to put, let's see, I'm first going to draw and then I'm going to mill. So I want the hunting wilds on top, then the Garrick. Then I can draw a card and mill. So I draw the Garrick, play the Garrick. I mean, it's very likely that I'm dead next turn, but I gotta do something. And I just make a beast? I think so. Play this and then Farseek also. Yeah, I think so. Got that land. So I am guaranteed an ultimatum next turn. And then the question is just, what do I want my ultimatum pile to be? Maybe just the time walks. Okay, they opt. They're gonna flip their amulets. Let's just first worry about getting through this turn. And then if we make it to our next turn and are still alive, then we'll see if we can find a way to win. I'm, I'm pretty sure we will be able to. They're not flipping their amulet. I wonder why. Yeah, frantic searching, discarding some lands, two cards in hand, still haven't flipped their amulet. Remains strange to me. Thought scour. Again, not flipping it. What are they waiting for? I would think frantic search is one of the best spells you can copy with primal amulet. Just because you just untap the amulet again, store up some mana, get to copy more spells. Yeah, still not flipping it. I mean, they've drawn like a billion cards by now, but they're just spinning their wheels, making some servos. What is the plan with this not flipping amulet? Pyretic ritual, sure. No flipping amulet still. What is coming out next? Okay. Goblin bushwhacker. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see. Am I just dead then? 10. I can block one and then I'm probably dead. Sure, okay. I was not expecting their big payoff to be Goblin Bushwhacker, but sure. All right, uh, Duresis, I want. Don't need this Bloody Thirst. Go for Throat, seems bad. Niles Bellbomb is okay. Hagger Mauling can go. Really strange payoff. Do I want Memoricide and Cranial? Maybe? I think I want Jahinis because I can expect them to have uh, Empty the Warrens. Maybe just not Niles Bellbomb. Keep most of the things the same. Yeah, I'll run it like this. <sighs> I was not ex I was not expecting a Goblin Bushwhacker to be their payoff. I may have played something a little bit differently then. And uh, this seems keepable. I do need some blue lands, but then we can Garrick into an ultimatum perhaps. Island, sure. Play this. Next turn we get to cast an ultimatum. Or right, next turn we get to cast a Garrick. And then if we draw the right combination of lands, we can maybe cast an ultimatum afterwards. We actually get to cast Duress 2 next turn, which is nice. This beacon in hand is a little bit awkward. Let's play land. Still looking for blue lands, but that is okay. Garrick, see if they have a counter spell. Wouldn't be unreasonable for them to have counters after boarding. Looks like they do. Is it charm? Ugh. I mean, better they is it charm and Garrick, but this Garrick, I kind of need it to unlock all of the expensive stuff. <laughs> Another ultimatum. Perfect draw. This is Duress then. 
Pyretic Ritual, Treasure Cruises, Opts, Detection Probes. I can take a Treasure Cruise. Yeah, I'll take a Cruise. The game is going to go long enough that, it, that that's going to be relevant, I think. Kind of surprised they didn't get Action Probe last turn. There's the Probe. They see our somewhat awkward hand. I'm going to... Pieces of the puzzle. Sure. More Cruises. And they took Frantic Search and a Cruise. So now they're going to Cruise. I really don't know if Goblin Bushwhacker is the, is the payoff you want for... Blue Red Storm. I guess they're running empty and, and planning to win that way. I don't know. It seems like a lot of work. That said, our deck is also kind of a lot of work. We do only need more and more land to be able to play an ultimatum. An untapped land, preferably. And then what do I do if I find the land for the ultimatum? Maybe I, the first one that I cast is just going to be for a cranial effect. A more side cranial extraction. Yeah, the Pyretic Ritual. Frantic Search, yep. Treasure Cruise, yep. Five mana. Turnabout, sure. If they have the Bushwhacker, yeah, they have the Bushwhacker, so now they just need the Empty. I don't know, maybe they uh, maybe they can get there. Yeah, that is a charm on the Garrick, really costing. Oh no, they actually don't have enough red mana to be able to Empty and Bushwhacker. Unless they have like a Ritual in hand, then it becomes easy, but okay, there's the Ritual. Storm is only five right now, still enough to kill me. Yeah, they have the empty and then they're gonna bushwhacker. So they'll make 10 tokens and those will all be two powers. So that's 20 damage and the, the bushwhacker kills us. All right, interesting deck. I'm not convinced that that's the right way to do red blue storm, but they got the job done. So we were just a little bit too slow after our Garrick got interacted with. On to round three. Round three. Ooh, this sounds bad. Let's mull. Mm -hmm. This is also a little bit awkward, but. I'm gonna keep, I don't want to mulligan further. I'm gonna need my land drops anyway, so mulliganing to five is gonna be hard. I'll keep and then put back the demon. The Sylvan Library will need to do work and the Sea Beyond as well. So we have not much to interact with, but there's there's outs to draw stuff. Cloud Post, okay. Hopefully it's not a blue version of Cloud Post. I think our more rampy version that it's just a race who does, does their thing faster is more favorable for us than if they're also running counter spells. Don't have another cloud post. That would be kind of scary. Forest. Okay, it's a green version. Sylvan Scrying. So they will get to set up a bunch of mana. They're finding a cloud post. So not next turn, but the turn after is going to be pretty scary. I'm hoping to find some ramp here. Uh, Blotchy Thirst. Not the card you want to see against cloud post. That's for sure. Huh. I'll put this on top. And I guess this Sea Beyond as well. No, I'll pay for life for this. Then Sea Beyond. Put back one of the ultimatums, I think. Oh no, put back the Blood Sheep Thirst. And play a land and pass. Not ideal, not ideal. Really need a Garrick next turn or Hunt the Wilds or something like that. Yeah, they play Cloud Post and then three mana. What do they have? Kiora. Kiora is a nice one. And tap some of their Cloud Post, make more mana. Yep. And then what? Like a, a map or a Prophetic Prism maybe? Expedition map. Finding more locust lands soon enough. Forest, not a great draw. A bunch of Sylvan Keratid. Well, I think what I will do is pay for a life for a Keratid and then forest on top and then play a land, play double Keratid and then have an ultimatum next turn. We just need to dodge something disastrous on their, on their next turn. It's very, very possible that they have something that's going to be a disaster, but this, I think, is our best bet. Yeah, next turn we draw the forest and then we have seven mana for an ultimatum and then we need to find a pile that's good enough if we haven't already lost by then. We'll see. Glimmer Post. They gain some life. They have eight mana. Endbringer. Endbringer I can live with. That's not that scary. It's an annoying big creature, but it's not a game-ending threat. We can go over the top of Endbringer. What I think I will do is just emergent ultimatum for two time walks and maybe like a rune scar demon and then the turn after i can go for upheaval planeswalker plain white celebration they find a sanctum of ugin untap their cloud post but don't do anything with it okay let's look definitely want these in my deck so green blue black black blue green green emergent ultimatum so i want walk the eons i want Beacon of Tomorrows, and then I want... I can also get Nezahal. That's not a bad threat, and it's also a threat I can... Yeah, Nezahal is also a threat that I can discard three cards to and then have it still be around after upheaval. So I think I get Nezahal. 
done. See what they give us. We're gonna get an extra turn regardless. Yeah, they give me Nezahal and the Beacon. Interesting choice, actually. The beacon is gonna shuffle back. So theoretically, I could do it again next turn and then just go find a demon. And then if they give me the demon, the demon is just gonna find me another emer emergent ultimatum. That honestly seems pretty sweet. Yep, and then just pass to ourselves. Ice tunnel, put on top, put on top, play a land, and then play another ultimatum. Go get Walk the Eons, Beacon of Tomorrows, and Runescar Demon. Yep, so we're getting an extra turn no matter what. Maybe two, if they give me two, that's, that's fine too. I'm sure I can find a way to win with Nezahal in play. Yeah, they give me the two turns. So cast this, cast this, attack with the Nezahal. Just gonna attack them, don't care about Kiora. I don't want them to, to get an extra turn, basically. Yeah, they take the damage, seems fine. And <laughs> we draw Beacon. Yeah, use Civil Library. Put this on top, pay four life for this. So we get to take an extra turn still. What I can do here is play the Binding first, kill the Endbringer, and that's down. Cast the Sea Beyond. Put this back, attack with Nezahal. So they're down to nine, I get an extra turn, I attack them on that extra turn, and then I will just kill them. Put on top, put on top. Yeah, search for a forest, and then let's just show them the beacon. And this will do it. Took a bunch of extra turns, and then we're able to kill our opponent. Okay, they haven't realized that they're dead yet, but... Or they just want me to play it out? No, they can see it. That was good. Kind of like we drew it up. Just went over the top of them. Now, what do I have against them? Blood Chief Thirst seems mediocre. I can put in Jurassic to kind of make them stumble. Shadow's Verdict seems bad. I think I like Jurassic more than Negates. A little bit more proactive. Yeah. Well, this hand has a lot of ramp, but no payoff yet. I'm gonna keep and then hope that it just comes off the top. Could backfire, but... At least I have the mana to cast any big spell that comes off the top. We start with Glimmer Post. It's not the ideal start for them. Uh, expedition map, so they will get their Cloud Post eventually. Woundscar Demon, just gonna play this Balagat Sanctuary. Get that tap land out of the way. And they go searching for that Cloud Post. Just play the Carotid. There's the Cloud Post. Do they have anything else? Eldrazi Mimic. So this is really an Eldrazi Post deck. Interesting. Ooh, there's the Ultimatum. Let's play the Carotid, play a land, and then play another Carotid. And then if I draw an untapped land next turn, I can ultimate him. I mean, that's the reason why I kept that hand, just because the potential for a very quick ultimatum was there. Expedition map, crack that. You're going to find a Sanctum? No, Cloud Post. But they already played their Seagate records. That probably a mistake. No attacks, duress. Let's just do that then. Spatial contortion from beyond. Don't care about the spatial contortion, so let's take the from beyond. And what else did they have? Deceiver of form. Interesting, I don't think I'm gonna die next turn. So that's positive. Let's far seek, go get an ice tunnel, and then yeah, pass, see what they can do, and then ultimatum next turn. Sylvan scrying, so that's what they drew. So we're not really in any danger then. They find a sanctum. I think I'm gonna go for an upheaval pile here. And then I don't wanna play my land drop. So blue, blue, black, black, green, 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 and blue maybe? Emergent ultimatum. Ha! We don't even need to show them anything. They just scoop. Kind of sad because I really wanted to show the upheaval pile working, but we would have just gotten a planeswalker, a plains white celebration, and an upheaval. Probably like a Nissa. And I think that would have won us the, the game right there. So um, yeah. It worked. Back for our fourth round. Let's see if we can be victorious. I'm on the play, so I'm gonna keep this, but this hand needs a bit of work. We have two seven drops that are not really relevant, one we don't want in our opener, but if this was a mulligan to six, I would keep it also, so I might as well keep it now. Cultivate, I only have one of, because I think three mana ramp is a little bit awkward, and it kind of shows here, to be honest. Hagra mauling, probably slow, but maybe valuable. Forest bird. Yep, more lands. Play that and then just pass. Some Petal Grove. So what is this? Seder Wayfinder. All right. There's some sort of like reanimation deck. Oh, this is the the Osiris Silence Orem's Chant type block deck that should give us some time at least. Hunting Wilds. I do like that. That can set up a pretty quick ultimatum. This and yeah, I guess a forest. Put the swamp on the battlefield and then pass. If I need to kill something next turn, I can with the Hagger Mauling, otherwise I can play Hunting Wilds. 
If their deck gets enough time, they will set up a lock, but hopefully we can be faster than that. Cedar Wayfinder and Gavany Township in their hand. Played the Gavany Township. What is this? Another Wayfinder. All the Wayfinders. Sure. They got a Plains. Attack me for one. We will take it. Now let's go find our uh, our two forests. This one and that one. Play another land and pass. Next turn I'm gonna get to Ultimatum. So it's a turn five Ultimatum. Not bad. Let's see if they can set up something scary or if they're just gonna end up time chipping maybe. They're getting back Vesper Lark. So they can do that then get back Auris. And then if they have another one, they kind of have the lock set up, I think. Hmm, that would be unfortunate. Yeah, that's what they're getting back. Yep, sure. They get to attack me for three. Oh, they're not attacking. So let's see if they have the effect. Probably. So I can't cast spells or attack. Yeah, I mean, that happens. That's okay. Just play my land and then I have the Hogger Mauling to maybe kill Auris at the end of their turn and break out of the lock that way. Yep, so they have Genesis to buy back Auris and keep that going. So now the trick is to kill their Auris at the end of their turn, break out of the lock, play Emergent Ultimatum and still go off. And we're lucky because Hagger Mauling really is the only card in her deck that can kill Auris at instant speed. But we happen to have it, so that's quite lucky. So we'll get the break out of the lock. Yeah, nice. Okay, now I need a way to win. After I play this ultimatum, I may just have the thing. I mean, let's just cast the ultimatum. That's gonna happen regardless. What would I find? I can find Upheaval, Plain White Celebration, and Nissa. And then they probably just give me the Nissa and the Plain White Celebration. And I can make a bunch of creatures, but they can just set up the lock and then I still can't attack and I'm stuck. Or I can find Liliana, Ultimate Liliana, get back all of the creatures from their graveyard. I think that's going to be better. So Upheaval, Liliana, and Plain White Celebration. Done. Let's see what they give me. Yeah, they give me Liliana and Plain White Celebration. And then cast Lily first. Oh no! Oh no! I did it in the wrong order. <sighs> I thought it would just let me cast Lily and then do the rest. That is dumb. Now I'm just going to lose. Oh boy. Yep. Just make a bunch of tutus then. Oh man, if I did it the other way around, it would have been so much better. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize it worked that way. Let's go tutor for something. Probably another ultimatum. Oh no, go for the throat. I tutor for go for the throat and then maybe get to do it again. Okay, okay, let's let's regroup a little bit and try and, uh, and still win this game. Otherwise, we would have been able to ultimate Liliana, get back all of the creatures out of their graveyard, and that would have been fine. We would have stopped the loop. Yeah, they're getting back Vesper Lark. Sure. Oh man, that was poor. That was absolutely dog poor. But let's try and rally and, and still win this game. You still have plenty of chances of doing that. So for next time, Plain Wide Celebration first, then the Planeswalker. So the Planeswalker resolves first, and then we get to proliferate. Okay, sure. They cannot attack me. That's good. Avacyn's Pilgrim. Sure. Yeah, can't cast any spells. Draw the go for the throat, which is nice. See what else we find. Ooh, this card is not bad put this on top and then do i want to pay for life i think i do just pay for life then i want to search my library for a card find the ultimatum i think yeah i still want that i can use it as a time stretch just pass then yeah they get back their guy play it on the land what is this four mana parallax wave hmm annoying it's very annoying. So let's go for the throat again. Killing their guy. They can save it with the parallax wave. Yeah, that's fine. And now let's see. There's the ultimatum. Use the library. Yep. We are really making this game hard on ourselves. Um, the binding can kill the wave, but that's bad because then their guy comes back. So I don't need that. Do I want the land and want to pay for a life for it? I think I do just pay the life. Play the land. Make them discard, and then I get to play Garak. Man, we really made this game needlessly hard. And then black, black, blue, blue, green, and then untap this and this. Make some more green. There's the ultimatum. So we'll get Walk the Eons, we'll get Beacon of Tomorrows, and a Runescar Demon. I really just messed up so I can show off the rest of this deck. That's the thing. Liliana is especially nice with the, the time walk that keeps looping. 
cast this or do I want to sacrifice islands? I could. It's not totally unreasonable, but I don't think I want to. Cast this. I'm going to tutor for what? Maybe just upheaval. It's not the worst. Or do I just want another ultimatum? What would my next ultimatum be? It would ultimatum for beacon upheaval something. Or I can get Balagad recovery. Get back plain white celebration and proliferate four times. That's not enough to ult my lily. Honestly, upheavaling, maybe not the worst. It's a little bit awkward versus their parallax wave. Or I just take Beacon of Tomorrows. Yeah, let's take that. Start taking a bunch more turns. I'm going to send my citizens to them. Yeah, they're going to make some blocks. That's fine. They're going to wave my token and then wave their own creatures. All right, that's okay. Binding. Use the Sylvan Library. Yep. Don't need the Carotid. I don't need the Binding either. Put that on top. Just play my land and then play the Beacon. Take that extra turn and they scoop. Yeah, we could just... Find it again with Liliana. Um, ultimate Garak. I think uh, I think we got this. We really made it hard on ourselves, but ultimately we got there. I think I want Jahini's expertise. I want Ravenous Traps. Bloodshe Thirst seems good. Battlegad Recovery, not that relevant. Nile Spell Bomb, also good. I don't need Crux of Fate if I already have Jahini's, maybe. Want some instant speed removal, which I have. Maybe take out a Sea Beyond. The other option is putting in the Cranial and the on more aside, but that deck can easily win in other ways. I'll, I'll definitely play Ground Seal. That seems nice. Can take out a library maybe. And then Farseek because I'm going to go a little bit slower anyway. Yeah, let's let's try this. I'm not 100% sure on sideboarding. People that watch my videos often know that I just build these decks, build, put together a sideboard, but I don't really have a sideboard strategy, especially not in a format as wide as Penny Dreadful. But this seems fine. Okay, we get to kill a Dwork. Do need to find an extra land to get this Cultivate off, but that should be good then. We can at least slow them down a little bit. Yep, they have a Dwork. Don't get to kill it right away, but soon enough. Oh, at least we have our third land. That's good. So next turn, we just Bloodsheath Thirst their Pilgrim. And then we'll have a Yahini's Expertise to follow up. Ooh, they already have the Auris. They also have the Lock right away. I mean, if they do, I'm not sure I care. They seem to be thinking about it. I think I'm just going to kill this, make their life a little bit harder, and then just pass. Maybe I should have played the Balagad Recovery, actually, just because I, I don't necessarily want tap lands in my curve. What is this? A Vesper Lark. Okay. Attacking with that, they only have two more cards in hand, and they don't really have an impressive clock. Ravenous Trap. Well, let's just cultivate. Find a swamp and an island. Put the swamp on the battlefield. Pass. And what is this now? Another Vesper Lark. So if I Yahini's Expertise, I kill all their creatures and then I can just Ravenous Trap to clean it all up so they won't get anything back. It sounds reasonable. Are they going to go for it now? Decided against it. Let's Yahini's. I can respond to this with an Auris. So maybe, yeah, at least I forced them to do this now. Uh, I cannot cast anything. And now they're also getting back their Evacence Pilgrim and I can't trap them. At least I've stopped some of the beatdowns. That's that's one thing. I think I just play the recovery and pass. They really don't have that much going on now. Another pilgrim and that's it. Yeah, they need to find Genesis. If they find Genesis, they're in business and I'm, and I'm in trouble. Yep, beating down for two. Not impressive. Just going to play my land tapped. Then I can kill the Auris. I think I will. It's pretty bad if they draw another one and I can't cast a spell next turn. Yep, just pass. And then next turn I get to... Ultimatum. They're just going to Township. Mm -hmm. We take four and we've controlled the game long enough for us to now cast that Ultimatum. And then I want Upheaval. I want Nissa, and I want the Plain White Celebration. And I now need to do it the right way. Okay, so remember how this goes. I want the Upheaval first and then the Plain White Celebration, right? No, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it wrong again. <laughs> I'm messing up again. Oh man, this is this is so bad. Ah, I keep messing this order up. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose this game now. Oh man. Yeah, you can roast me in the comments for this one. Oh, that is... Uh, <laughs> that's painful. I think we would have easily won the game if we just did it the wrong way. Or did it the right way. Yeah, they have pilgrims, so they're gonna be much faster than we are. Well, that's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> Ay ay ay. I guess I might just ravenous trap them. 
Oh, they didn't have to discard because they had so few things going on. Well, probably gonna lose now. Probably gonna lose now. So I want the plain white celebration first and then the upheaval. Okay, and they have the the power up land, the Gavany Township next. So I'm gonna take a beating pretty quickly here. <sighs> I can't even draw anything. I'm just gonna scoop. This is a shameful scoop. Maybe I could get out of this, but I should have just won this one. Yeah, removal spell, but I was not gonna get out of this now. Man, that was bad. That was so bad. All right then, let's let's focus, let's focus. I, I hopefully get to do this again and then do it the right way. I will keep this. I have ramp, I have a Jace, Blood Chief Thirst, seems fine. Oh, I can't believe this. We still haven't successfully upheavaled into a Planeswalker ultimate. Could have done it twice or maybe even a third time if our opponent had let us continue that match, but... Oh, they scooped a the match, probably... Oh, they multi four. Well, I guess if we did it correctly last time, we would have we would have won anyway. So I'll just pretend like I, I I did it correctly, and our opponent is is scooping to just give us the win or something. Let's go on to the fifth match. See if we can actually uh, get this. Uh, if we can actually play our combo correctly. Final round. Let's try and perform our combo correctly. If we get there, I'll keep this hand. We have turn two carried into turn three binding. If we find another untapped land, otherwise we get the sea beyond, put Nezahal back. That all seems fine. Start with the Rhymewood Falls, pass, Sanctum of Ugin. Is this the, the Metalwork Colossus deck maybe? That's always an interesting matchup. I think the deck is really good. Draw Rune Scar Demon. Not the card we are looking for. Play Sylvan Carrotted and pass. Forest, yeah. Looks like the Metalwork deck. See beyond. And then I think I want to put back the Runescar Demon. I'd rather be able to tutor for that than Nezahal. Put a land in. Hopefully they don't already have the Colossuses next turn. Maybe we can snipe a Samblance Anvil with our Binding. I mean, yeah. Oh, Kiora. Maybe this is a different deck then. Maybe this is another one of those Cloud Post decks, but they just haven't drawn any Cloud Posts. Ancient Stirrings. Expedition Map. Yeah, that looks like Cloud Posts. Okay, we draw a land. It's not an untapped one. Let's just play this Binding, kill their Kiora, slow them down a little bit, set up more ramp for us, and start working towards this ultimatum. Next turn I can play a Jace, mill, draw cards, get closer to finding the lands, and then, yeah, pass. They played a Forest and then the Expedition Map. It seems weird to me. It seems like you would want to play the map, yeah, and then play your cloud post. Now you're not using the mana. Seems like a mistake, but I'll take it. Ooh, nice. Sylvan Carotid is sort of a land at least. It does mean that I don't get to play Jace as well. I mean, I could, and it's very likely that I find the land, but I'd rather ensure myself an ultimatum, and I can only do that by playing a Carotid this turn. So I'll do that. I mean, I would have loved to have a Jace out, but if I don't, that's fine too. I'll draw Z Mimic. Yeah, so this is the same deck again. Garak, all my creatures get death touch. Great. And black, black, blue, blue, green, green, green. Emergent ultimatum. Okay, gonna try again. Upheaval, plain white celebration, and I think a Nissa. Our opponent seems to like this. See what they give us. Okay, they give us plain white celebration and Nissa. So let's think about the order now. Cast a plain white celebration first, then the Nissa, right? Yeah. And this is gonna, I need to proliferate four times, cast the Nissa. So Nissa resolves first. Yeah, finally we're doing it in the right order. Proliferate the Nissa again, again, again. Then search my library for a bunch of basics. I don't think they have a board wipe. And now we have a bunch of 4 4 tramplers. We do have to pass the turn after doing this, but I think we'll be all right. From beyond, sure. I think they're just gonna be dead to the 4 4s though. Now they pass. Let's just go attacking and that should be enough. Just got myself an extra sub. Real nice promotion. But decks like this are just fun. So I hope people do enjoy this. I do. That's for sure. And they block. Take a boatload of damage. And they are dead. Nice. Clean win. Um, I want Duresis, I think. That's what we did last time. And then this is bad. I don't need a recovery. I maybe take out a Sea Beyond. Yeah, that seems fine. But I'm happy that we finally got to do the thing correctly. And it was pretty good. I, I wish there were even better ultimates that just like win the game on the spot. But this is, I think, the best we can do with the current card pool. Ooh, Blood Chief Thirst. I probably... Mm, they do have the Mimics. This hand seems pretty bad. Let's mull. Mm, this I can keep. Put away the Upheaval. 
I've carried it into Garrick, into Jace, or maybe if there is an ultimatum on top somewhere into ultimatum. That could be a turn four ultimatum potentially. It'd be a good way to end this video. Do need a bunch of untapped land, so it's not really all that realistic, but would be sweet. They are gonna get a cloud post. So they didn't just have the cloud post to start with, but they are setting up quite nicely. Hagra Mauling is a fine card against their deck, I think. And then pass, another expedition map. Yeah, they find another cloud post, but it's gonna be a little bit slow to get those into play. Maybe they have explorers or something like that. Ooh, another untapped land. I do like that. And let's go play Garrick and then make a beast. I mean, if there's an ultimatum on top, that would be a very fitting end to this video. I mean, I, I imagine it's gonna be enough for the win. They just play a cloud post and nothing else. No ultimatum on top. Boo, unfortunate. Make blue. Untap these two lands, make another blue, play Jace. Jace is also not bad. Now I need to decide, do I just want to minus and mill them? Honestly, that could also get there. I need five turns to kill them with milling. I think I'm going to go for that strategy, actually. Seems reasonable. Play this, Farseek, Spatial Contortion, killing my beast. That's fine. Uh, get an Ice Tunnel and then just pass. Maybe I should be just drawing cards and looking for more ultimatums. But I have my win button here. I can kill their next creature. So I think I, I might be able to pull off a mill win. They play another cloud post. Ancient stirrings, sure. Conduit of rune from beyond. I'm on the mill plan now, so I might as well continue. Play this, make a beast and just pass. And then sit behind this beast and this hogger mauling to, to mill them out, hopefully. They make a scion. That's not too big a deal. Yeah, this is conduit of rune. I get to search for an Eldrazi, put it on top. I'm gonna mill that though. I think this is not a creature I wanna kill either. Deceiver of form on top, sure. I'll just let this live. I don't need to kill that, it's not a threat. Make another beast, mill them for 10 again. And they only have 16 cards left in the library. I can keep this conduit under control. I think I'll, I'll be fine. One more turn of milling and they only have five more cards left. Can't imagine them beating me with Five cards left in the library. Eldrazi Mimic, sure. Sylvan Scrying, getting another card of the, out of their library. Sanctum of Ugin, yep. Search for a creature. Endbringer, Endbringer is fine. Maybe I'll kill Endbringer. Oh, they, yeah, they need to sacrifice a Scion if they want to. No, they can cast it. They don't need to sacrifice a Scion. They have the Conduit out. Oh no, the first creature is cheaper and they've already played Mimic. So they need to sack a Scion to do this. Yeah, they don't have great attacks. And there's an emergent ultimatum. Play my land and show off a little bit more of the deck to the opponents. I think I just get Plains White Celebration, two time walks, and then I can ultimate my Jace or take an extra turn and mill them out. Ah, they got the warping hell. <laughs> they got the counter in hand. So let's go get walking, uh, walk the eons. Let's go get Beacon of Tomorrows and let's go get Plain white celebration. I think we would have been fine even if this gets countered, but yeah, they were saying as well. Of course, Jay's, get, Jay's got me anyway. Yeah, that's true. We get a time stretch. Just cast this, target ourselves, and again, take two turns. Not bad, not bad. And then we just get to mill them out. All right, fitting end to the video. Opponent being cooperative, do appreciate it. Let's mill them for 10. And yeah, I guess we untap two lines, might as well. And then just pass. No need to do anything. Take another turn. Oh, plain white celebration, just drawing it. Let's see if our opponent is cooperative again. Maybe they are, maybe they are not. Doesn't matter. Yeah, let's proliferate these two. And again, and again, and again. And because our opponent was so nice, we're gonna let them draw 20 cards. And that's it. All right, four and one. Let's go back to the deck and uh, look at some of the changes we might make. Four and one with the Emergent Ultimatum deck. We did mess up a couple of times. If you play Upheaval and a Planeswalker, or Upheaval and anything, or your Plain White Celebration and a Planeswalker, make sure you do it in the correct order, which is putting the Plain White Celebration on the stack first, or the Planeswalker on the stack first, and then the Upheaval. Did mess up that a couple times, but I gotta say the deck felt pretty good. Just enough interaction, enough ramp to be fast enough and go over the top of what most opponents were doing. We lost to that Storm deck, which I think is just a bad matchup. 
faster combo decks that don't really care about any of the onboard interaction you have are going to be tough but overall i had a great time playing this deck i might tweak it a little bit not sure what maybe play with the threats a little bit play with uh, the ratio of mana ramp and, and and the land base maybe the sideboard but honestly this is just a, a great fun deck i do recommend this if you like this type of nonsense uh, i hope you liked it and i hope to see you back for the next one